I used to stay up late. As a a high school student, I ignored my parents' wishes, and I stayed up way past my bedtime. Teenage Rebellion was a lot of effort when you have all honors classes, so you squeeze in what you can. I had a couple of friends I did stuff with, I was involved in theater, so I got busy. Didn't have a girlfriend, or anything even resembling one due to my complete and total lack of charm, but I stayed busy. And because of my raging hormones and the fire of Teenage Rebellion, I stayed up late. Now, I don't know if you've ever stayed up late in a building where everyone else is asleep, but it is a certain kind of bliss. You can say anything you want as long as you're quiet enough, do anything you want as long as you're quiet enough, go anywhere, eat anything, as long as you're quiet. I have spent a great many nights in my room, alone, curled up with the TV on and quiet, laptop in hand, and I wrote the next of my stories. Sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, even just regular old fantasy. I poured it all onto this virtual paper with black, pixelated ink and a steady hand. The guy has to have his hobbies, right? I'm full of creativity, and the occasional D&D session doesn't exactly quench the thirst for adventure present in in a young boy. So I stayed up late and I made up my own adventures. And one such night, though, things changed. The shadows of my house stopped being welcoming. I stopped roaming the floors of my house after dark. I started hearing things, started becoming more withdrawn. I entered my room earlier, stayed up later. Eventually, I couldn't bear the silence, the loneliness. It all climaxed on one night in the fall when the clocks Stop. I'm not a strong person. I can lift some of my own weight, maybe 50% of the time, and that's generous. So, I don't spend a lot of time being active. I mainly spend my time inside, ignoring people. I've inherited some anxiety from my mother, along with some obsessive-compulsive tendencies, so I tend to remember where I put things and when people mess with them, which they delight in doing. It's like they enjoy seeing me be annoyed or something. High schoolers, college students, even some adults are just kids anyway. The night started out fairly normal. Mom grabbed a bite to eat on the way home from work and got me something too, so I gratefully accepted a burger and sat in my room, my lamp on and the TV quiet. I screwed around looking through Ask Reddit and such, and I looked over at my clock at one point and noted the time. 2.48. 2.48. Nice. I thought of the chemistry test I had tomorrow. And sighing, I closed my laptop and coiled up its charger. 2.50. Turned the TV off, grimacing at the sudden silence, and set the remote on the side. 2.51. Changed into a pair of sweatpants, balled up my shirt and tossing it to the side. 2.57. I flicked my lamp off, laid down, and glanced at the luminescent numbers on the clock. One last time. 2.59. 2.59. Cool. I whispered to myself, rolling over, thoughts about my test running through my head. Will I pass? How hard is it going to be? <laughs> you know those ones. I laid there for what must have been at least 20 minutes. I listened to the noises of the night, birds calling, rustling in the bushes outside, dogs barking in the distance. I rolled over again, looking at the clock. When I saw the time, my blood ran cold. 2.59. That that couldn't have been right. I was pretty accurate when it came to guessing time, one of the perks of my anxiety. Made me really gauge time really, really accurately, and I, I knew that it had to have been at least 20 minutes of silence and darkness. Then... Then another thing hit me. I couldn't hear the rest of the house's noise. Usually there'd be plenty of little noises here and there, plumbing running the the water from the toilet to get the grate empty it went to, or maybe some some creaking as the back door was pushed on by the wind, but tonight, right now, there was nothing. I listened harder, and I realized I couldn't even hear the sounds of nature. The silence was deafening. I could hear my blood rushing in my ears, the movement of my comforter on my skin. I could hear my heart beating out loud, plain as day. I got out of bed. The springs squeaked as if they were frightening mice, switched on my lamp. 
It shone bright for a grand total of five seconds and winked out. Now normally, something like this wouldn't make me lose composure, but the thing is, I could tell it was nothing related to the fuse or outlet as my clock was still displaying the time. 2.59. Grabbed my flashlight, flicked it on. Surprisingly, it worked. So I strode to my bookshelf and I grabbed the most weapon-like thing that I could find. My pocket knife. It's not exactly intimidating, but I just snatched it, held it in my fist, fear shaking my hands. This wasn't my standard night, so I was understandably frightened. I stepped out of my room, taking a last look at the clock. I don't really think I need to tell you what time it was, but, but I'll say it anyway. It's 2.59. The rest of the house was still silent, and I figured maybe the breaker in the rest of the house was just tripped by something. It happens, right? So I headed towards the garage, where the fuse box thing was. I was uninterrupted on the way there through the darkened hallway, and I felt even more fearful. I could usually hear my mom asleep, snoring away, and my dogs being loud as they are, but nothing. I started to rush and instantly tripped over something. I kept a tight grip on my light, but not my knife, which fell from my hand and put itself in the floor next to my face. I flinched away from it, now visibly shaken. I sat up, casting my light around for whatever I had tripped over, but it was gone. I knew it wasn't my feet. I could feel something, like, like fur on it. Maybe it had been one of the dogs, but wouldn't I have heard it scramble away? So I scooted away, forgetting my knife, and I stood up. I proceeded towards the kitchen, then eventually the garage. In the kitchen, the oven's clock wasn't on, nor was the microwave, which just reinforced my theory about the power. I looked at my phone on the counter and turned the screen on. Time was, you guessed it, 2.50 fucking nine. It made me feel fear as I progressed to the garage. I opened the door, tried the light, nothing, figures, so I stepped into the room, looking with my flashlight for the fuse box. That is, until the light went out. I smacked it against my hand, expecting it to flicker to life, but nothing. And suddenly, through the little clothing I had on my body, I could feel the room's temperature, ice cold. You know, I don't watch a lot of horror shows. I, I knew something was up. I've lived in the South for all of my life, and there's absolutely no reason an early fall night would be this cold. I shivered, my teeth chattering audibly and I turned around to step back inside. And the door wasn't there. I remember I, I just up and said, what the fuck? Now it wasn't that I could see a bare wall or something, quite the opposite, in fact, I couldn't see anything, which, which unsettled me more. The scant light from my bedroom should have been visible, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't there. My lighthouse, my rock, the, the little, bit of courage I had left was gone, and now I was alone, afraid, and blind. I felt my heart beat quicken, my blood freezing and boiling all at once, my stomach disappearing. I heard a clatter on what felt like the other side of the room, and then the pitter-patter of animal steps, and then a growl. Looking around, panicking now, I couldn't see anything. I fumbled for the light switch, and finding it, I switched it off and on again. This time, there was a flicker of light, and I saw the fuse box easily enough on the other side of the room. And that's when I saw it. It was a large black dog-like thing with greasy, oily fur. It had green eyes, almost human in their sockets. I saw near me, in the newfound light was sitting a plant pot. I dropped my flashlight which flickered on as it hit the ground, snatched the pot and threw it at the thing. The ceramic pot bounced off the thing and slid to the side near the fuse box while it skittered away out of the light's range, and I instantly dashed for the fuse box. In a full-on sprint now, the garage seemed too long, too much ground to cover, but I was suddenly there, only a few feet away from the salvation of sweet, sweet light, and then my knees buckled, and it slammed into my legs. I rolled over, I kicked, I screamed out of the silence. It was hissing into my face, one almost fluid mass on my body, holding me down with those, those eyes staring into me. I screamed again, and I hit it. In what seemed to be the face, it reared back and skidded away and it let me whip around and claw at the fuse box. I flipped every single one into the on position and huddled up against the wall, breathing short, ragged gasps. I got up. It was gone. Leaving the garage, 
I left the light on until I, I could slam the door shut and lock it behind me. I did so with every other room in the house until I grabbed my knife from the living room floor Then I backed myself into the room and pushed my bookshelf against my door. Nothing else. Not tonight. Climbing into my bed satisfied that I wasn't going to be interrupted anymore. I turned my lamp back on. The light stayed on this time and I grabbed my TV remote. I flicked my TV on. I queued up another episode of The Office. I calmed myself down. Never got a chance to enjoy it. Because my clock let out this little beep. And then, the lamp and the TV went out. And I turned to see the time. It was three o'clock. I don't stay up late. Not anymore. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I don't think I've done one of these outros myself. Uh, it's only been RoboMCP, the same one that runs that 24-hour live stream that you guys are able to watch uh, 20, 24 hours. But I wanted to say thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening, if you're listening over the podcast. And I especially wanted to give a very special thank you to Eric Mary, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Twinkie, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Van Tyne Jensen, Nicholas Said Eliasson, Glenda L. Hernandez, Terry Ramberg, Jazzy G. Asia, Mercer Virus 2, Sandy Barney, Chempinski, Dante Rao, The Ginger Bros, and Andrew Stenberg. You guys are the patrons that help keep the lights on in my place. And if anyone here would like to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta because, you know, anytime you guys do that, it helps me not die of starvation in my own home. I also wanted to give a quick shout out because I'd like to support every author I can find online. Michael Wellen, you can find at Twitter at author underscore Wellen, has a new book out called Within the Walls. It's available now on Amazon. I'll have a link right here on the screen and I'll throw it down there in the description down below. As always, you can find me on Instagram, Billy the Skeleton. You can find me on Twitter, where I am most of the time, at Mr. Creepypasta Zero. And you can find me at Spotify, uh, iTunes, Google Play, and just about everywhere else that you can think of to find a podcast. Oh, and YouTube, which is, yeah, the YouTube 24 hour live stream. Yet again, another time needing to mention it. Please go listen to the live stream. All right, guys. Sorry for taking up so much of your time at the end of the video. And sweet dreams.